in the last hand, we saw that I got dealt pocket queens twice and I lost twice. So that was a really instructive couple of hands for us to learn from. Now, one of the hard things about doing a course where you're watching the live play on the internet is that it goes by really, really fast. And so, um, you know, <coughs> excuse me, we're going to be um, trying to give you guys as much information as possible while their hands are going on. But I also want to let you guys see as many situations as possible so you can see my decisions and my thought processes as they're going on. I'll try to explain them as much as I can. So I already explained the situation. Obviously, if you got pocket queens against pocket kings or aces, you're just in a really rough spot. And you definitely are in situations sometimes where you're going to have to fold that hand. You, you've got to be able to fold a lot in poker, and you've got to be able to fold even really strong hands if you think your opponent has you beat. As I already mentioned, if it looks like someone has a flush or a straight, you got to be able to let go of those queens. you got to think about the big picture. You've got to think about your stack. You've got to think about money management. Especially if you're in a tournament, you have to lay down some really big hands sometimes. And we make up for that by being aggressive and by stealing a lot of pots with uh, really calculated bluffs and uh, semi-bluffs and getting money in ways that we call stealing in poker, right? You build up your stack in lots of different ways in poker. You don't have to have the best hand all the time. And a lot of times you even have to fold the best hand because the odds of someone having a better hand than you in many situations are pretty high. And so if they make a good bet, if they make a good bluff, um, we don't really worry too much about that. We have to make good decisions. We have to make good decisions that over time will make us money. We're not playing against the house like another games of chance. We are playing against the um, the opposition, which is other human beings. So there's a lot of stuff involved, like psychology and whatnot, that plays into it. Okay. The second hand that happened was um, our opponent had um, ace with a high kicker. I believe it was ace queen or ace ten, and um, so they had that ace and they flopped those two aces. So even this is a low stakes game we're playing, so it's not that big of a deal. If I was in a um, a really high stakes game with a lot of money on the line or in a tournament with um, a lot on the line. I would have looked really hard at those aces. I mean, the chances of someone having an ace are high because everyone plays aces, right? And even though we actually shouldn't be playing aces unless we have a high kicker to go along with the ace, especially if we're in bad position, which is any position in the first two or three seats after the dealer button, um, you got to assume that a lot of people aren't going to be so disciplined with the hands they play, and people are going to play a lot of aces. So the odds of someone having an ace when they come out like that are actually pretty high. That doesn't mean that we're always going to be afraid. If you have a pair of pocket queens and aces come out, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're beat, but you definitely want to be able to fold if someone is showing a lot of strength in their hand. If they're not afraid of that flop, I mean, they probably have a good hand. And so you got to be able to fold them. In that situation, you know, I went with it. And also a lot of it has to, has to do with how many chips we have and how big the pot is. If it's a huge pot and you can lose your whole stack, you need to be able to uh, throw it away. Now, notice here I have queen 10, unsuited. A lot of people would play this hand. This is not a good enough hand for me to play. I'm going to fold it. We need to be very disciplined with the hands we choose to play in poker. We want to play tight most of the time, which means that we're only playing suited high cards or suited connectors most of the times, right? A suited connector being something like 4 5 suited or 9 10 suited, etc. Two cards that can make either a flush or a straight easily with lots of different. Combination. So we really like to play suited connectors because you can win big pots with those. A lot of people come into the pot, if you get to see a good flop and you've got a straight draw or a flush draw, and maybe you even like to get a draw with a pair, those are the kind of hands that we want to be in because if the pot gets really big and then our cards come, then we can win a really big pot. That's how you make a lot of money in poker. A lot of times we play high cards and we get pairs and it can be tricky because, okay, we might win a lot of hands with our top pairs. But you have to be careful because you can also lose a lot of money if you have a top pair. This is very interesting. So I got dealt pocket queens back to back, and now I got dealt queen 10 back to back. Now, notice this time my position was even worse than last time. So this was a relatively weaker hand than the one I was dealt on the last round because everything depends on our position. If you are in good position, meaning you're on the, on the dealer button, since you get to act last and see what everybody else did, your hand is going to be relatively more powerful. It's a good position to be in. You can steal a lot of pots when you're in position and people check you, you can bet and steal the pot, okay? When you are in bad position, you have to be really careful. You need to play really strong hands and you only want to call if you're in early position if you can withstand a raise because a lot of people will raise after you and you need to be able to call that raise and have a good enough hand that if you hit something, you're going to have a winning hand or you just need to fold, okay? Because if people raise after you, you don't want to check and then call a raise and you're in bad position and you don't know what the person after you have has and they're in a good position. Okay, so your hand needs to be much, much stronger to come into the pot if you are in the first two or three seats 
as opposed to when you are in one of the best two or three seats by the dealer button. And of course, it's all relative. So if you're in the middle, then you know you need to have a pretty strong hand, but you can play some hands if there's only a few people after you that you wouldn't play in an earlier position. So it's very, very important. And you can be really, really aggressive oftentimes if you've got a big stack and you're in good position. Because if you've got a big stack, that means that you can take all the chips of somebody that's in front of you. So that's, that's intimidating. If someone can lose their whole entire bankroll to you in one hand, and you're also in position, if you if you bet aggressively in many situations, they will be afraid to call because they don't want to lose all of their money. And so we're going to see that in many situations here. We're going to play. You're going to see where I will put some pressure on someone when they probably have the best hand, but because the board is scary or I have projected a certain hand that I don't think they have based on the way that they played their bets, then it's going to be really hard for them to call. And a lot of times they will fold and we will win sometimes very large pots, even without the best hand. And that's what it's all about. That's why we play um, no limit hold'em because the betting gives us a lot of flexibility. It is both an art and a science and you can win a lot of money when you get good at it because if you're playing with, you know, thousands of dollars on the line in one hand and you double up or triple up on a huge pot, you can make an insane amount of money. Um, you can also lose money if you're not careful, which is why we need to learn ways to lower our risk, manage our money, because of course sometimes you will get unlucky, people will make bad decisions, or even though the probabilities are in your favor, you will still lose some pots. So that's why the philosophy and the style of play is being aggressive, uh, betting a lot in positions, stealing a lot of pots, and things like that. That's why that's the way to play, because sometimes you will get unlucky, and sometimes you might even lose you know, a really big pot when you had a big advantage in terms of the odds and the situation. And we just have to get used to that happening sometimes. But over time, if we are consistent in the way that we play, and we play very conservatively in terms of what cards we choose, and we are disciplined about that, then we are going to win money over time. And basically, even though poker is a game of skill, I would say that it's about half skill and then about half discipline and patience. Because you have to be able to fold at the right times. You have to be able to bet even when it's scary, but you know that you should. You have to be disciplined. And you can't let your emotions you know, control you. That's what you have to do. And it's really, really important that you learn that message. That's why you never play when you're drunk why people go on tilt if they lose a big pot or something and it really messes up their play oftentimes that's what we call it going on tilt and people start making really bad decisions they, they play bad cards they play aggressively that's actually what we want if you have people going on tilt because they're angry they make really bad decisions and you just continue to play with discipline and you're going to win a lot more money when people are emotional it's going to be a little more chaotic but uh, i'll teach you guys how to react when someone starts going on tilt the general rule is okay this time we're um or one after the button on the small blind. We've got a connector, but it's not suited, so we just don't even play this. Even though you only have to call 10 to see it, the problem is you're going to be in bad position for the whole rest of the hand, and it's just not a good hand. Even if you hit something, you're probably going to be beat. So we don't want to mess with it, okay? We only want to put ourselves in a situation where we have an advantage, and that means we play suited connectors and high cards, and we play them in position. You can almost play any cards in position. That's how important uh, position is in poker. If you're on the button and people are showing weakness or you got a couple calls, you can just bet into that with the worst possible hand, which is considered to be 7-2 ops 2. That's considered to be the worst possible hand because it doesn't connect to very many straights, it's low cards, and and it just it doesn't make any strong hands. And you know, of course you can win with that hand if you get lucky, but it's just the lowest probability hand. Everything in playing cards is about probability. So there's no guarantees about anything. But if you put yourself in a situation where you've got the probabilities on your side, you want to bet big because it takes you know patience to get in those situations that they don't come along very often. Now you've noticed while we've been talking, I've seen about five or ten hands come through, and I haven't played any of them. And so this is you know a really good lesson in poker. You have to be patient. You have to wait until you get good cards. Poker is a game of patience where you have a long time of doing nothing, and then as one you know someone has put it before. You have long time periods of time of boredom and then moments of sheer terror. <laughs> but really, basically, what it, what it happens is you have a long time of, of waiting and then you have uh, brief moments of action where things happen. And of course, when you watch it on TV or whatever, it's just nothing but action. But you have a lot of time where you're just waiting for good hands. And then even when you get a good hand, you might lose that pot. You know, it might not work out for you. But you, what you do is you you see lots and lots of hands. You see lots and lots of different situations, and you learn all the different opportunities that come up in poker, opportunities to bluff, opportunities to win big pots with certain types of hands. And also there are some dangerous hands that we call problem hands 
For example, ace-queen is considered to be a really good hand, but we call it a problem hand. Professional poker players um, are wary of certain hands where you have high cards, but that are often end up being the, um, the losing hand because you can hit a high card like an ace, but then you'll often lose to an ace-king. Your kicker, you have a kicker problem, as we say, and it can be hard to let that hand go. And so what ends up happening is oftentimes you'll either win a small pot or you'll lose a big pot. And so that's something that uh, we'll talk more about in uh, the next lesson, and we'll go from there. Thank you.